Well, good afternoon. Here we are again, uh, session number seven, and we greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, at the heart of all biblical prophecy is one simple statement, <clears throat> and that statement is made by Jesus Christ himself in John 14 when he looks at his disciples and he says these words, I will come again. And for 6,000 years, men and women have longed for peace and perfection. And here he is coming back, and now it is going to happen. About 300 years ago, <clears throat> there was a song. We sing it at Christmas time, but that was not the reason it was written. Isaac Watts wrote this song, and he was not thinking about Christ or a baby in a manger, he was thinking about the millennial reign. Notice the verses. No more let sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness the wonders of his love. Beautiful song about the return of Christ during the millennium. And even Daniel the prophet out of Daniel chapter 7, I want to read these words. And to the ancient of days, which is Christ, <clears throat> was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all the peoples and all nations and all languages should serve him, and his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and it shall never pass away. And with Daniel chapter 7, we walk into Revelation 20, and I want to read the first few verses there. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having a key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan, and he bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he could not deceive the nations no more until the thousand years was finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them, and judgment was committed to them. So where are we at? We started right here in chapter 4, we call the rapture chapter. 1 Thessalonians 4, we see the rapture of the saints. We talked about the marriage supper of the Lamb. We talked about the judgment seat of Christ. We looked at the riding of the four horsemen, the seals, the trumpets, the bulls, Armageddon, and here we are, the millennium. Christ coming back <clears throat> to rule and to reign for a thousand years. And we even can look at it like this. Revelations 4 through 18, the rapture of the church, tribulation period, and all those first six sessions. Now, we're going to be looking at the millennial reign and the great white throne judgment. And Lord willing, next week, home sweet home. Looking forward to that time. So we have left chapters 17, chapter 18, chapters 19, with all of heaven rejoicing over the destruction of those two evil empires. <clears throat> the religious empire and the economic or political empire of the Antichrist. And if you remember at the end of that chapter, they were saying, hallelujah, may our God reign. Let us rejoice and exalt only him. 
And that's where we are with Satan now being bound for a thousand years in the pit. A real place, a real person, a created angel, and because of the choices he made, he's going to be bound for a thousand years. And we may touch on that and the reason for that a little later. <clears throat> But I want to just look at a couple of these verses. We get a lot of questions about verses 4, 5, and 6. Let me read them first. <clears throat> then I saw the souls of those that had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, had not received the mark on their foreheads or their hands. And they lived and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again for 1,000 years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one that shares in the first resurrection. Now, I'm going to slow way down on this one. And I would encourage you to study this one out. Be a Berean on this one. The first resurrection is not a single point in time. The first resurrection is rather begins with Christ. In fact, it says that in Corinthians, the first resurrection. But in the first resurrection that began with Christ, it also includes those who believe in Christ but died before the rapture. So, go real slow with me on this one. The first resurrection begins with Christ, includes those who believed in Christ but died before the rapture, also, those who are alive at the time of the rapture, that could include you and I, or those martyred during the tribulation period, and the Old Testament saints who believed in God by faith alone. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and on down. In fact, you can read in Daniel 12, and explains that. So the first resurrection that he's talking about here include all those that believed in God by faith and in Christ Jesus. Luke actually calls it the resurrection of the righteous. Old Testament saints, believers from Pentecost till now, those that may be raptured, and those that are in the tribulation period that die as a martyr for Christ. That is the first resurrection. The second resurrection is the dead spiritually. They are the ones that will be resurrected to go to the great white throne judgment. Notice what the word says here. The rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. These are all the unbelievers for 6,000 years. Nimrod will be there. Jezebel, Cain, Goliath, you can go on down. All the unbelievers will be in the second resurrection. First resurrection, all that believe. Second resurrection, dead spiritually, unbelievers. First death is physical. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. The first death is physical. The second death is eternal. 
But the second death to the believer has no power whatsoever. If you're in Christ, second death has no power because you're in Christ. And I hope I made that simple enough to understand. First resurrection, all those that believed in God by faith are in Christ. Second res resurrection, all dead spiritually or unbelievers. First death is physical. We all die. The bodies cave in. But the second death, the ones that at the great white throne judgment, they will die spiritually forever. But we have the power of the Holy Spirit and we'll be resurrected into life eternal. Something else I want to kind of clear up. There are two kinds of people in the millennial kingdom. The first kind of people in the millennial kingdom are those with a new eternal body. Now we just talked about all four of them. Old Testament saints, believers in the church age, that's you and I, raptured believer that could also be you and I and those that dies as martyrs during the tribulation that's the first kind of people in the millennium old testament saints these are all those that believe also into the millennium the survivors of the tribulation period even though probably six and a half billion people will die through all of those experiences that we have gone through in the book of Revelation, there's still going to be some <laughs> that are still living. They will enter into the millennium with an earthly body. There might be a 50 million, there might be a 100 million. Those that probably hid from the Antichrist. And the entire remnant of Israel that hid or they will be saved at Christ's second coming. And then like we said, Gentiles that came to faith during the tribulation and survived until he came back at the Battle of Armageddon. So you've got all of us, Old Testament saints, and you got those that survived, were never killed, they will go in to the millennial reign also. And for a thousand years, they will multiply and there'll possibly be billions of people again. Us, with a new eternal body, there will be no marriage or given a marriage, no reproduction. These, there'll still be families born, but we will be ruling reigning during that time over all of these people. Now a question comes a lot, and I'm going to keep this one as basic as I can also. <clears throat> Why a millennium? Well, let's look at it. We have been praying for thousands of years as believers we, in our home, when we were small, we prayed it every night before we went to bed. Our Father, which art in heaven. And it ends there. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it was in heaven. We've always prayed that. So God is going to answer the prayer. Thy kingdom come. Also, the reason for the millennium is that is where the redeemed saints will be receiving a reward for the deeds done in the body. The Bible says one place, maybe the widow with the two mice will be a ruler over ten cities. But for the faithful that live for Christ, he will reward them, and we'll see that reward take place in the millennial reign. Also, it says in Romans 8, 
it is a time to redeem creation. Right now, it's living under a curse. This whole world is reeling to and fro. Talks about it. they're waiting for the redemption, not only of our bodies, but the whole planet is. And we're going to see that redemption and the curse lifted during the millennial reign. It is also a fulfillment of the Davidic covenant and the Abrahamic covenant. You can read about that in 2 Samuel. God made a covenant with his people. And in this covenant, he's going to share in that millennial blessing with the 12 tribes of Israel. And we get to be a part of that as we rule and reign with our bridegroom. It is also to prove a truth. Man's basic nature is sin. When man will live for a thousand years in perfection and holiness and prosperity under Jesus Christ, he will always go up to Jerusalem and, and praise him. But when Satan is loose for a season to judge those that were born during that time, for they have a choice, <clears throat> the sad commentary of man is many will follow after Satan at that time. Not us, we are sealed. But those that are born during the millennial reign, they have to make a choice. And then also for God's son to enjoy a honeymoon with his bride, the church. <clears throat> our savior is our bridegroom. And maybe it's a poor way to say it, but we get to spend a thousand-year honeymoon with Jesus. So I'm going to follow this little outline the rest of our time together. We're going to look at the Savior during the millennium. We're going to look at Satan during the millennium, who's bound. We're going to look at the saints during the millennium. We're going to look at the sinners during the millennium. We're going to look at what society would look like during the millennium. So let's begin. The Savior during the millennium. He will be reigning, he will be ruling, and he will be receiving. Let me explain that a little bit. The Bible says in Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, that he's going to rule. He'll begin to rule with a rod of iron, and you can study that out the first at least 75 days. It won't take long for man to shape up. It is so much perfection. And he will sit on the throne of David. We call that a theocracy. It is God or deity ruling man. He will rule with power and righteousness. He will rule and bring great peace and glory to every place on the planet. And as for former people like the Antichrist and the other kingdoms ruled with greed and lust and power, Christ comes along and leads with love and peace and holiness be an awesome time. He will rule as a righteous dictator. That sounds kind of unsettling because dictator sometimes sounds like oppressiveness. Well, a unholy dictator is wrong, but a righteous dictator, when there's no sin, no corruption, it's perfect. Think with me how America started. We, we started in this country as a republic. <clears throat> in other words, we had rules and laws to follow, and it began right. We're not a republic anymore. We're a democracy. We're seeing that already. People not following the law anymore. There's a two-tier justice system. Who's ever in charge? Mob rules. 
Well, the next thing we're going to be next to, and we're seeing this with our government already, is going to be a dictatorship. They're going to tell you when you can go and when you can't go and who's going to go here or buy here. We're already walking into that. Perfect time for the Christ. But he will rule as a righteous dictator. But he also will receive. And we put that in there because for the first time, you know, he came here for 33 years. He was hounded. He was ridiculed. He was beaten. He was blasphemed. He hung on a cross for our sins. Man rejected him, but not here. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see him together. He will be received. Something he's always deserved. Christ will receive glory and honor and praise. For a thousand years. <clears throat> Satan during the millennium. While we read in the first three verses, he's going to be jailed for a thousand years. First time in history, the Bible says right now. In Corinthians, I believe, he says, he is the God of this world. He's the ruler and the prince of the power of the air. The Bible says in Hebrews, he is the accuser of the brethren. But not during the millennium. And when he is released, he is going to be judged and he will go to hell forever, even after he does deceive some nations. But during the millennium, he is bound for a thousand years. We'll read that again. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss and shut it and sealed it over him that he should not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were completed. And after these things, he must be released (coughs) for a short time. Hard to comprehend that, but the Lord has all of this in control. And when he is loose for a season, the Bible says he will quickly be judged. Well, what does the word say here about the saints? Well, we know one thing, that we will be resurrected and ready to reign with him. We're going to be a part of that, that first resurrection. We're going to share in that ruling and reigning, however that takes place. And the Old Testament saints, they're going to live with us during that millennial reign. Talks one place how God will bring his people, his chosen, the Jew, to the feast with us to see the bride and the bridegroom. A wonderful time. In fact, the Bible says in John 8 that Abraham saw this day and he was very, very glad. That'll be a great time. What about sinners during the millennium? You see, billions will be born during the millennial reign. All of us that go in in the body of Christ, the Old Testament saints, And the martyrs, we're sealed forever. We will rule and reign with Christ in some capacity. But those that are never died during the tribulation, they'll be 
hundreds of millions born during that time. Gentiles. And yet, even though they are saved during this time, their offspring has a sinful nature. And you probably would never notice it. For a thousand years, there'll be so much perfection, it's easy to worship when things go well. But when they're tried, when Satan is loosed again, they're going to be forced to make a choice. Wow. Many will turn and make the wrong choice. What about society during the millennium? Well, we're going to go down a rabbit trail. I like, <laughs> I like rabbit trails. And what I mean by them, I'm going to give you scripture on a lot of these things, but I think society will look like, but you seek it out, you study. There are hundreds of verses in the Old Testament to talk about this millennial reign. Let's jump in. For 6,000 years, man has longed for peace. It's always been in man. In fact, he fights for it. Kind of ironic, isn't it? We got trillions being spent on nuclear warheads and all of these things. Why? So they can take over and have Peace. Well, the only true peace only comes when Christ comes back. But the Bible says in Isaiah 2 and 4, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. <clears throat> nation will not lift up a sword against any nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Personal peace, national peace. Awesome. And what are those peace features? We just read one of them. In the last 5,600 years, there's been 14,500 wars, and they estimate 4.78 billion lives lost in war, man seeking peace. But here, he's going to have it. Then there's going to be joy and holiness. It's going to abound everywhere. Every city, every community, every family, there'll be joy and holiness. He says in Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart. I will put a right new spirit in you. It will cause you to walk in my statutes. There will be holiness everywhere you look. I cannot comprehend this. You can't go anywhere on the planet today and see evil and sadness. But here it will be joy and holiness. <clears throat> I like this one. Even this old dead sea that has 33% salt. It will be restored with fresh water during that Jerusalem earthquake when Christ comes and puts his foot on the Mount of Olives, Zechariah. And it says that the living water will flow out from Jerusalem, one half to the Dead Sea and a half to the Mediterranean. And they will stand up here at En Gedi, and they'll mend their nets. Everybody's fishing. That's just one area of the topography that will change for better. I like this next one. During the millennium, the four and five letter words will be a thing of the past. You won't be talking about drugs or evil or pain or fear or anger or killing or rape, hate, steal, Drunk, jail, sick. Bible says that they will neither harm nor destroy. 
no sickness, and rare death. The Bible says in Isaiah 33, no one will say, I am sick. <clears throat> We're all going to like that one, aren't we? <laughs> no more viruses. Perfection in the body. And the reason it says rare death, it says, and a child will die at a hundred. And I'll mention that again. No more deformities. Right now, it seems like everywhere you look, there's sadness because of deformities in the body. Not then. The Lord said, I'm going to take all of those away. During that millennium, you're going to have a place to live and to be with your families, and you may have your own zoo. Why? Because the removal of the curse. Isaiah says the lamb will lie down with the wolf. The leopard shall lie down with the goat and the calf and the lion together. That'd be really cool to have a, a lion as a pet <laughs> during the millennium. The cow and the bear shall graze together. You try that today, and if that was a grizzly, those cows would be running. And the nursing child will play over the lair of a cobra, and a weaned child will put his hand over the den of a poisonous snake. The snake will still slither, but the curse will be held over the snake. There'll be no more poison. Just a normal day in the thousand years with Christ. Probably during that thousand years, you're going to see a lot of times that the Lord will go into parks, maybe some, around some of those parks in Jerusalem, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Perfection and beauty everywhere in nature. All of you landscapers are going to really enjoy the millennium. <laughs> be a time of great beauty. Everything that he created and said was good, was good, was good in the Garden of Eden. We're going to see the same thing here. No hospitals, no po police, be perfect justice by him. You can walk anywhere you want, day or night, in the millennium and there's no fear, none. Men and wo women will live to be nearly a thousand years old again. Remember where we said that a child will die at a hundred? Maybe during that first time that Christ begins to rule and to reign, he'll bring swift correction. He'll rule with a rod of iron. But it's going to be, remember how the earth got tilted back? It's going to be like it was pre-flood. Men will live nearly a thousand years old again. You'll look like this at 50 You'll look like this at 500. You'll look like this at 900. It's amazing. And not only will man live to be nearly a thousand, but taking that curse away and all the negativity that slams into us all the time through movies and negativity through media or whatever it is, during this time, there's going to be full knowledge. The Bible says in Isaiah 11, the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord. They shall all know and understand together. <coughs> Excuse me. You remember what it says in 1 Corinthians 13? 
Now we are looking through a glass darkly. Now we know in part. But then shall we know even as also we are known. We're going to have full knowledge. When you walk into glory, when you walk into the millennium, you're going to know everybody by name. Hi, Paul. Hi, Silas. Hi, Abraham. Hi, Dorcas. You're going to know my name. And there will also be protection during that time. The Bible says they will all dwell in safety and they will be safely inhabited. Again, I, I can't comprehend that. Doesn't matter where you go, where you fly to, what vacation you take during the millennium. No evil. Safety. You can let your children do what we used to do just 50 years ago. My folks would let us ride anywhere we wanted with a bicycle. Can't do that today. Just think, we could go swim in the canals again. Be fresh water. Don't have to worry about dog days anymore. Then the Bible says in Jeremiah, reproduction by the living people, the population of the earth will quickly soar. He says in Jeremiah, I shall multiply them in that day and they will not be diminished. A lot of people are going to be born during the tribulation period. And those that are bo born, those that we will rule and reign with, there's going to be work everywhere. Labor. But work and labor, that'll be so enjoyable because no arguments. He says there that you shall plant your own vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. It'll be so productive that the plowman, he says in Amos, will overtake the reaper. An abundance of produce and crops. <clears throat> what about the light? <clears throat> Bible says in Isaiah, the moon shall shine as the sun and the sunlight will be seven times brighter. Incredible increase of light. And again, there will be no harm or destroying anywhere on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full with the knowledge of the Lord. No more natural disasters. For you, those of you that live in California, pretty nice, isn't it? No more earthquakes. For you, those of you that live in Troy, Ohio, or Covington, no more tor tornadoes. Though those of you that live in Kansas, no more 100 mile windstorms. There will be no natural disasters. In fact, it says he will not judge from the sight of his eyes, but with righteousness he shall judge. <clears throat> when you have perfection, in Christ, ruling and reigning with love, our minds cannot comprehend this. One of the great joys of looking forward to the millennium is to just witness our Savior ruling. There will be untold prosperity for everyone. There's a lot of verses in the Bible about this. Untold prosperity. It says one place that you will never again bear the, repro the reproach of any famine. No one's going to be going to bed hungry. <clears throat> and I put this in here for a reason. <clears throat> they estimate that there's 2.5 decimillion worth of resources on the planet today. Think about that. Million, billion, quadrillion, quintillion, sextillion, septillion, octillion, novillion, tracedillion, decimillion. That tells me if 
There were seven billion people and we all had perfection with those resources. Everybody would be worth $30 billion. So if you want to go to the lake, you want to go up and down the ocean, and there you've got a nice little yacht. It will be prosperity everywhere. Kingdom kids. And the reason we call them that is they're going to be the ones that are born during that time. They will go to church. They will learn of the redemption of Christ. They will read the Bible. And yet, there's still going to be a necessity of the new birth during this time when Satan is again released. It's the kingdom kids that Satan is going to go after when he's released. And hopefully the fathers and mothers in those homes, when everything is perfect, that their priority is still on Christ. Because they're going to be making a choice soon. There will be a unified language. The Bible says that I will restore the people to a pure language. A lot of speculation what that language might be. I would suggest it will probably be Hebrew. <clears throat> Unified worship. Not half of the planet, not some communities, but the entire world will worship the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. And there will be yearly times we go up to Jerusalem to worship and to see him and be with him. It'll be a great time. Yes, we will rule and reign for 1,000 years with Jesus Christ. I have this picture because when there is perfection, and the plowman will overtake the reaper, and the extreme intelligence of men today that can build bridges and skyscrapers, what do you think it's going to look like during that thousand years? <clears throat> Incredible. Now a little dampness here in Revelation 20. Now when a thousand years has expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations. And after he does this, and there's going to be some that follow him, they call that last battle the Battle of Gog and Magog. Satan will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Torment. That is the end of Satan, the devil, the false prophet, the Antichrist, and all Christ-rejecting people. When that happens, there's going to be that second resurrection of the dead, the great white throne judgment, <clears throat> mankind's eventual meeting place face, to God, face with God as creator. There will be no Christians at this judgment. You remember the judgment seat of Christ? That was all of us, the believer. This is all the unbeliever. The dead dead that remain dead until this time in that second re resurrection. They're going to go to the great white throne judgment. We, as believers, were judged by a wooden cross. They are going to be judged by a great white throne. And I saw a great white throne, 
And him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, those small and great, standing before God, and all the books were open. A terrible time. A sea of humanity. There will be people there, religious people. Lord, Lord, look at the wonderful things I did in your name. Depart from me, I never knew you. All those be billions standing here that followed after religion. But if there's no relationship in Christ, it's rejection. There's going to be a judge there, but there's no jury. There'll be a prosecutor there, yet they have no defense. There will be punishment there, but man will never die. And there will be torture, yet torment will be worse. Why do we say that? The Bible says that the fire will never die, the worm will never die, it'll never be quenched, and there'll be torture throughout eternity in the flames of hell. The torment is worse. What's the torment? The torment is what we call memory. Somebody that were, was presented the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, like Festus, almost persuaded. And if he never became a believer, Festus will be in hell throughout all of eternity, and that memory bank will go round and round. I could have come. I could have come. I could have come. Why didn't I come? And the torment of the mind will be magnified in hell. There will also be books opened. The Bible will be open. The Bible says in John 12, the word shall judge you in that day. The book of words will be open. Matthew 12, every idle word shall be given on the day of judgment. The book of secret things, God will judge the secrets of men. The book of life will be open. Anyone not found written in the book of life will depart. Hell is real. And the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are and they tormented day and night forever. The final destiny of Satan and all the unbelievers, this is the price of rejection and the rebellion against God. They rejected the greatest story ever told. God so loved the world. They rejected the greatest sentence ever written. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have ever lasting life. They rejected that. They rejected the greatest decision that they should have made. Just like the boy in the pig pen. I will arise and go to Father's house. And they rejected and made the wrong choice to this question. A question asked by Pilate. What shall I do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? And they rejected him. And because of that, it's hell. And for them, it's the end. In hell for eternity. But folks, it gets even better for us. The Bible says... 
that this whole world is going to be destroyed. But look at what Peter says. This sinful world will be destroyed. Nevertheless, we are waiting for a new heaven and a new earth in which the righteous dwells. Bible says, the elements shall melt with a fervent heat or a great heat. And we will make all things, and he will make all things new. In other words, goodbye, old earth. At the end of the great white throne judgment, I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's going to destroy all former things will be passed away. And he is going to make a new heaven and a new earth. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. It's going to happen. <clears throat> this was session seven, and Lord willing, session eight next week will be a peak into heaven. The Bible does say some things about heaven. The Bible gives us little glimpses of what it may be like. But our minds cannot fathom. The Bible says in Corinthians that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men. The incredible things that God has prepared for those that love him. And the reality of that may be very soon. So, in the meantime, and it gets pretty mean, as we patiently await for his return, let's stay on the alert. Stay on the alert. And you stay on the alert by being alive with him and in him every day. As bookends, you open the day with the word of God in prayer. You close the day and in between, make sure you're on the alert. Every animal in the Serengeti Desert, the minute they wake up, they're moving, they're running. Why? And they're going to be lunch for somebody if they're not moving. And the Bible says there's, the old devil is like a great roaring lion. He wants to devour us. Stay on the alert. Pray for those that are facing martyrdom right now around the planet. <clears throat> and it may increase as things tighten up. <clears throat> Stay in daily ministry. If you're depressed and you're discouraged right now, start to do something for somebody else. Pray for somebody else. It's an easy way to get out of a pity party. Get your mind off yourself. Think about someone else. Pray for them. Do something for them. And be confident and courageous that we are on the winning team. We know how it ends. And the Bible is very clear. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit is very good at what he does. He's God, and he wants to work in our lives to ultimately give Christ the glory. <clears throat> Next week, Lord willing, we'll get a peek into our final home. Father, thank you again. Thank you again. We know that the book, the Bible, the Word of God is the only thing we need the only thing we really need to read. And we thank you, Father, for Christ and what he's doing at the right end of the Father as he's interceding, that he, he's our advocate at this very time. May we be alive, courageous, and bold with the word of God that we have in our hearts that we can share it with others. And may we, may we be patient and alive looking for your return. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Lord bless you. See you next week.